Hi, welcome. It's Meredith. I'm here with our message for Monday, the 8th of March, 2021. We are using the lovely Arcanum Tarot for our message today. Let's see what's going on in the energy atmosphere. Our overall theme, our cards from the bottom of the deck. <laughs> Back again. Look at our beautiful Nine of Cups. Oh, how sweet. What a great way to start a reading, too. You know the Nine of Cups is about fulfillment. It's about our making our dreams a reality and the energetic investment that we put into that. So the card shows up as further confirmation for this theme that we've been seeing where we're doing a bit of a review. We've had the Six of cups and we've had the wheel of fortune recently so you know we're taking a look back we are enjoying some hindsight and bringing bringing uh garnering our gains bringing our successes in forward and into the now and utilizing our skill and our talent here to continue to make our dreams a reality. Coming with this is temperance. Ooh, nice. See, there's the alchemy. You know, that's what this card is about. It's about balance. It's about a little bit of instability even because that's what happens when we bring energies together that we've never brought together before. And sometimes it can feel or appear or seem incongruous to us that we we can be faced with you know some inner turmoil inner challenge as we take a look at hindsight and as we do the work of gosh the death card and the high priestess you know how many times we've seen them in the past right in how the high priestess really brings our attention to what's in the periphery what is influencing the now how it serves, if it serves. And then the death card is right there to sweep off the foundation what it is we no longer have a use for. And I'm sensing that here in the Nine of Cups and the Temperance card, but also connecting that to our recent readings where we've seen all this wonderful love, bliss, joy, and happiness, but mixed in with cards like the Ten of Swords or the Three of Swords. We saw an awful lot of that card last week as well. And accompanying those cards, though, were cards like the Emperor, the Empress, the Star. You know, we had, we have all this wonderful influence to take the very best of our experiences collectively and have a good nostalgic, maybe not nostalgic, but at least reminiscent view of the things that have been less than ideal and how they've shaped where we stand today and how those things create the alchemy, the balance, the harmony in temperance that continues to add to our Nine of Cups life experience. Oh yeah. You know, here's the great punctuation mark to all of that in that we now have the devil showing up. And the devil is all about the temptation to listen to and heed the wounded ego, right? Uh, that's a that's a really potent energy, you know. When our when our ego flares up and blossoms, and gosh, <laughs> introduces all manner of fear and doubt from within. That's what gives us. Uh, a great opportunity there to look in hindsight to see where that came from what where did that originate and how is it valuable to us right now how is the devil valuable to our nine of cups and it's through taking a look at our emotional reactions and some of our belief system and programming that highlights for us what the death card and the high priestess have been pointing out to us all along. So I feel as if we are witnessing just in these three cards, 
at the very beginning of, of the reading, some of the results of our inner journey work over this past year. <laughs> yeah, I do feel the presence of the High Priestess and the Death card. We were seeing them a lot last year at this time. And I, I feel as though we've you know, gathered up all that energy, kind of put it in a box, we're ready to let it all go. And we're having life experiences that offer us, you know, unity, harmony, and alchemy. And it, the alchemy here is the contrast that shows up between the devil card and the nine of cups. So while you are investing your energy in bringing your dreams into reality you're also we are also simultaneously being challenged by the wounded voice of the ego and how are we handling that we're bringing that through temperance we're upgrading the energy let's see what this all leads to <laughs> i love it now we have the knight of cups so we we've got momentum for this we are in motion with the Ace of Cups. The Knight is carrying the Ace. You can add that Ace to the Nine and make the Ten of Cups, right? You can do that because we're talking about our love, bliss, joy, and happiness and the energetic investment that goes into creating that. And at times, we are going to meet the devil within our own selves, the ego, the wounds, the old reactions and responses. And we can come to those with a measure of peace and allow for it and have acceptance for it and keep going on in our journey. And I feel that that's what we're doing. And look at this. <laughs> Just the mention of the death card. And there it is. And this is, God, I love these cards. This is such confirmation of what's being shown to us here in the first three cards. The death card stands there. You're not you can't walk past it without having uh, some kind of transformation. So you know it's a simultaneous ending and a new beginning. And what we're witnessing here is some of the ending to the old story, the old tape loop that would prevent us from enjoying our Nine of Cups. And that's why Temperance is right there in the middle. And I feel that Temperance is also in great collaboration with the death card because we're ready to let go of that old story that programming that belief system and our ability to witness it is profound i was just sharing with a friend of mine just moments before this reading i was sharing with her that it feels as if mercury retrograde was easier to navigate than mercury going direct and that was on february 21st so not that long ago it feels as if the atmosphere destabilized when mercury went direct and then all the stuff that came up <laughs> quietly while while mercury was in retrograde just kind of got released in some kind of an explosion so we're staying in the momentum of of <laughs> wow, it feels like we are traveling with the force and the power of the explosion of having Mercury go direct. And this is how we're traveling. We're traveling very well. And I like that the death card is here because we, as I said moments ago, you, you just can't go past this card without having some kind of transformation. So we are transforming what the devil brings up for us through the alchemy of temperance, and we are continuing continuing to move forward in love, bliss, joy, happiness in the suit of cups here. Oh my goodness. Yeah, look at that. Ace of cups. So there it is showing up in the reading twice. You have it here with the knight, but you have it here proper. So again, add that to the nine, you do get the ten of cups. So the ten of cups shows twice as well. So this is... This is revealing our commitment to the love, bliss, joy, happiness we have on overflow in self-relationship. This speaks to our dedication to our journey. <laughs> and here's the emperor. Again, I think we saw him every day last week. And I think we saw the nine of cups at least two or three times last week. And here they are again. 
They're showing up in the reading for us. This is uh, the emperor's energy is steadfast. This is us being deeply connected to our wisdom, our experience, our spiritual journey, our sense of generosity for, again, this overflowing love, bliss, and joy on offer to us in self-relationship from the divine all. Here it is for us. And I love that the Ace of Cups sits right on the other side of the death card because, you know, like the Three of Swords, this is a card that most people gasp at in a tarot reading. They're afraid to see the death card. And the death card is so representative of upgrade because we're shedding energy that no longer has purpose or service to us. And we're doing it in appreciation with a sense of acceptance. Now, that doesn't always manifest in a beautiful way like we talked about last week. Sometimes it's the ugly cry. And I feel that the cards just invite this. You know, be your raw, vulnerable self with yourself and embrace what's on offer as a result of you doing that kind of journey work within. Mm. Then we have <laughs> Four of Wands back again. Another beautiful repeat card for us. This is the super stable card. And here again is more confirmation of that message that we are in the perfect atmosphere, the perfect environment to, to enjoy this process. Yes, I know. Some moments are not ideal, though it's all valuable. You're witnessing yourself upgrade your own energy <laughs> by seeing those devilish moments, those old devilish ego wounds. Now, I'm not one to say the ego must die ever. I feel that the ego has a beautiful purpose. Uh, oftentimes though, uh, through belief system and programming, we can have a tendency to allow the ego to run the show. And that's not really how it's meant to go. It's there to be a great highlighter, <laughs> a flaming pink or orange or yellow highlighter that shows us exactly where this energy is coming out, devil card, and not necessarily serving us. And then in those moments, we bring temperance, we bring the death card, we bring the ace of cups, which creates the four of wands because we've embraced our inner experienced wise emperor. Yes. And then we have the seven of wands. <laughs> Uh, you know, this card is a touch defensive, so we can anticipate and allow for, you know, have broad margins for our responses, reactions as we encounter the, the ego voice throughout the day, how we decide to respond to that. We might attempt to justify, defend uh, where we are in that moment. And when that happens, bring yourself back to the death card, the ace of cups and the knight of cups. You want to keep that energy moving and flowing, stay in the momentum. This isn't an energy to linger in. This card is showing that you have an opportunity to create heaven here on earth, nine of cups, because all sevens and tarot are about heaven touching earth within self. So when you feel triggered, if you feel triggered, if you are hearing the ego voice, you know you have some work to do. You have some energy to invest in your relationship to self and the divine all. So move into the death card, move into the ace of cups, pour this overflow on anything that feels even remotely defensive. Or if you catch yourself in the act of justifying what you're doing and why. All right, let's move on now to Angel Answers. Ask a question if you've got one. Oh, I like this. Allow these cards to be confirmation or a fresh message. And here we have improving health. Perfect, because this is really about our energetic upgrade. Whatever it is we are upgrading in connection to the all that is, is improving our well-being. Great confirmation card. Next.
get more information. Yes, talk to your guides, talk to your angels, share with the people you know, love, and trust. Have a great conversation with your bestie. Talk it out. <laughs> it's always enlightening. And I also feel my guides are saying, look for signs and synchronicities in your day to day. You know, the universe, the divine all is always talking to us. So set your intention, intention and attention on how the universe is speaking to you today. Ask to be shown. And for those of you who are feeling a bit uncertain, allow yourselves to be guided into whatever the next step is. And you can just put it out there like that to the divine all. Show me the next step. One step at a time. <laughs> next. Yeah. Hey, great confirmation here too. Helpful people. Here again, your guides, your angels, and your nearest and dearest people. Share with them. Talk to them. It is through this collaboration with Temperance and the Death card uh, that we will be deeply educated and expansively aware. And when we talk about our journey with the people we know, love, and trust. A lot of inspiration comes out of those conversations. So turn to the people that are, you know, in love and support of you at your most vulnerable, at your most raw, and allow yourself to be inspired by what comes of that. One more. <laughs> you know, this card showed up a few times last week. And here it is once more, peaceful resolution. That's all over the reading. It's all over the readings of last week too. Uh, we are resolving energies and uh, it feels freeing. It does, it does bring peace to our heart, our mind, our soul. So keep doing it, it's great. All right, affirmation today from the Spirit Junkie deck. <laughs> this is sweet. I like this. Instead of taking on the fear of others, I reflect love. Instead of taking on the fear of an old program, an old belief system, a wounded ego voice, embrace that. Say thank you for showing up and I'm going to pour on the love, Ace of Cups, Nine of Cups, Ten of Cups. <laughs> I'm going to pour on the love here because that's, that's what's required. That's the transformation of the death card. And that's the alchemy that's taking place for us. So, you know, dig in, lean in deeply to the energy atmosphere today and do some really good, good spiritual journey work for your own self-relationship today. <laughs> Peace, love, joy, happiness to each and every one of you. Thank you as always for watching. Do hit the like button. It's deeply appreciated. Namaste.